If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. In most cases, it's safe to assume that a wire is shaped like a very small, thin cylinder, and it turns out that the volume of such a cylinder is equal to the area times the length, and by area, we are referring to the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now, of course, we also know that volume is equal to mass divided by density. And so we can set this expression for volume equal to this expression for volume. And then we can solve this equation for that cross-sectional area. And to do that, we'll divide both sides of the equation by the length. So we now have a nice tidy equation for the cross-sectional area of the wire in terms of its mass, density, and length. Now, in this chapter, we have learned that the resistance of a wire is equal to a constant called the resistivity multiplied by the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. We have this expression for the cross-sectional area of the wire. We're going to substitute it in for A into the resistance equation. Now, this equation is a bit messy. It's a complex fraction. But we can recall from algebra that if you have the following complex fraction, the way to simplify it is to take this denominator and swing it all the way up to the numerator so that it becomes A times C divided by B. So in that vein, we're going to take this denominator and swing it up to here to get the resistivity times length multiplied by that density times length. We can actually combine the length times length to make the length squared. And so we have this final expression for the resistance of the wire. Now, fortunately, we know all of the quantities on the right-hand side of the equation. For example, the mass m was given to us as 1 gram. Of course, we'll have to use kilograms, so that's going to become 1 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. The density of the gold wire was given to us in the question directly, and it's already in its standard unit. The length was given to us as well. It's given to us in kilometers, so we're going to have to multiply that by 10 to the positive 3 to get that length into meters. And then the resistivity of gold is given to us as well. So we can directly plug everything in now. And when we plug that in and simplify, we get the following rather large value for the resistance. And if the question wants you to put it into mega ohms, which sometimes it would if it's such a large value, we just have to recall that one mega ohm is equal to 10 to the power of six ohms. And so if we perform that conversion, we should get roughly 2.71 mega ohms as the final answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.